Hi, everybody. It is now back to electrochemistry. This is not part two electrochemistry. This is part one of electrochemistry, but it's part two of the building number nine. So a little bit of refresher stuff. Oxidation numbers, and this is refreshing. It's basically the charge of it. Okay. This is the cumulative question that sneaks up. Um, orbital diagrams of full and half full support the oxidation numbers, meaning that if you have a full or half full um, setup, that means stable. Full and half full equals stable. And then just to recap it, the rules are on there, but let's just go over what's the oxidation number of everything in permanganate. Okay. Permanganate is MnO4 negative one. Um, rule right here is oxygen is negative two. So oxygen is going to be negative two. I've got four of them. That's negative eight. Okay. So Mn's charge has to be Mn minus eight equals negative one, right? It's negative one from right here. So Mn is plus seven, but I'm sorry, the real number is plus seven. So the oxidation numbers are Mn equals plus seven, O equals negative two. And I want to point out that oxidation numbers are for one of them. All right. Other stuff. We've done some of this when we balanced equations. So oxidation and reduction is oil rig, or Leo says GER. Oil rig is um, oxidation is loss of electrons. Okay. O I L. Reduction is gain of electrons, R, I, G, oil rig, okay? Um, so reduction is gain of electrons, so the charge is going to go down. Negative 1 to negative 2, plus 4 to plus 2. Um, standard reduction potentials are given to you not in this huge list like I have right here anymore. There'll just be a few of them on there, and we'll talk about those in more and more detail as we go along. But we'll be using this, um, and you'll be assumed to have this, um, on the worksheets and things that I give you. Um, but this right here, a positive E cell, means that the, these are the best at being reduced. So a positive one would be like you make $2.87 whenever this happens. You make $0.15 cents whenever this happens. That's not so bad. Hydrogen is the big nothing burger, right? So that's it. And it's kind of made up to be that way, and the voltages are relative, but that really doesn't matter a whole lot. That's it. And this means if you do this reaction, it's going to cost you $3.04. And that's kind of like a natural attractiveness of it is what I think of as E cell. So again, oxidation is loss. Loss of electrons um, means that if you lose electrons, you're going to become more positive, right? Um, so when I say typically not shown this way, um, but notice that this is the table I told you we'll use. This is a table of reduction potentials because you're gaining electrons. Your reactants are gaining electrons. But notice when I flipped this, see how this guy is flipped? All I did was change the sign of the voltage. That's it. Oh, let's get rid of that line. Maybe not. Okay. So electrochemical cells. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to label everything on these cells and then kind of talk about it a little bit. Okay. So on this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose anode on the left. And I'm choosing that. And the anode does oxidation. Okay. So I, I've made that choice. And I suggest you do that. It just makes a, it's a little bit easier when you do that. Um, so what happens here is if I have an anode that is going to do an oxidation, this is going to be a metal. And the reaction that's going to happen is the metal is going to turn into an ion. Metal, let's say it's plus two, plus two electrons. And over here, I have another metal. Oh, I'm not going to write on that. I have another metal. I'm going to call it, ooh, uh, I'll call it, eh, I'll just leave it there. It'll obviously, oh, I'd use a different color. Ooh, how pretty. What's your favorite color, Mr. Fowler? I thought you were colorblind. Yeah, it'll be black. So this is going to be metal plus, well, it'll have to be one electron, so we can tell it's different. Um, metal plus electron is going to give me metal plus one. So remember, if this is an ion, this is going to be aqueous. 
and a metal is solid. So these are going to be aqueous. It's going to be solid. And that's what's happening in this beaker. Okay. So do you see that this guy right here is making electrons? Well, where are the electrons going to go? Out the wire. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Do you see that this guy over here wants electrons? He's going to gain them. They're like, yes, electrons. That's just what I need. Okay. Now, most of you had physics. So in physics, they teach you how you have to, com you have to complete a circuit. So if I have negative charges running, my electrons are negative charges, I need to complete that circuit by having a negative charge run in this way. So this is talking about the salt bridge. And the salt bridge is going to flow in both directions. So typically it's nitrate. Let's roll with it. It's KNO3 this time. So if it flows in both directions, if NO3 runs to the left, K positive will run to the right. Okay. Now this should make sense too. Do you see how this guy right here, this metal, is going to dissolve? And I keep making more and more metal plus twos. Well, if it becomes more positive, right, the the other ones aren't going to want to form because it, the positives will repel the other positives, so it pushes the K positive out of the way. Okay? And that completes the circuit. All right? Now, what I didn't put in there, which I should have, and I'll go to a different color. I don't know why, but I'm going to. I'll go with gray. And in our beaker, so these are the porous disks, um, what you typically have is your metal, and that metal's nitrate. This metal, metal plus one, and this metal's nitrate. So notice they're different metals, okay? So let's go back to talking about this. The wire on top is going to move the electrons, okay? The salt bridge, which our salt bridge is typically a string soaked in KNO3. And those are the always soluble ions that can flow easily. A porous disc is the same thing as a salt bridge. Um, you'll see this, but it's a little more rare just because this piece of glassware isn't seen as much. I don't have any, so that's why I say it's rare. If I had them, I'd say, oh, I'd make fun of somebody or another, but I'm not going to do that. Both beakers have positive and negative ions in them. Okay, The positive ion is typically going to be the metal plus something. And the negative ion is typically going to be nitrate because it's unreactive. So you don't want to start making pre precipitates in different spots. And I brought the reaction. There's my dog again. I should do the unboxing for Amazon's ring this time. Uh, the metal has its ion, and the negative ion is typically nitrate. So red cat and anox. Reduction occurs at the cathode. Anode occurs, anode does oxidation. These are just uh, vocab. And that's all you need to know about them. Okay, which one goes? You know, if you know that there's oxidation happening, oxidation happens at the anode. Okay. Electrons flow from anode to cathode. Preferred to put the anode on the left. Preferred is just what I like. Um, you'll see it in books that way almost always. But you can flip it around, and AP flips it quite often. All right. Here's another one. Yikes. Okay, so I have a metal ion, right? I've got a metal. So inside here, I'm going to have the metal ion. And see, this one has sulfate instead of nitrate. Oh, not nitrate. Okay. That's rude. How rude. But it's okay, right? And over here, we don't have nitrate, but we have the ion of whatever we're messing with. See how this is hydrogen gas? What's the ion of hydrogen gas? Hey, that's H positive, right? Now, why didn't they use nitrate? They use Cl negative. Mm -hmm. I just want to show you they can, right? but chloride's not going to form any precipitates, okay? Gases are sometimes in cells. The only gas that I remember seeing is hydrogen, okay? Um, oh, that's not true. So there's hydrogen. Sometimes there's some oxygen ones that they throw in there. So we'll, we'll, we'll hydrogen, uh, we'll go with that as most typical. Note, if no metal, so on the left-hand side, see how we don't have any metal? That's H positive. It's not like copper or iron. And inert, which means unreactive, metal is used. That metal is most often platinum because platinum doesn't react at all. But platinum is expensive. It's crazy expensive. Okay. 
So that's what happens if you don't have in your half reactions any part. All right. Galvanic cells are spontaneous cells. So remember that means that delta G is going to be negative, and this happens without energy. Whoops. Delta G is negative, right? So the voltage is positive. Oxidation and reaction and reduction occur. E cell is positive. Okay. Draw the galvanic cell based on the following half reaction under standard conditions. Okay, so notice here it says E cell is positive. So that means I'm going to have to flip one of my half reactions. Okay, so I'm going to draw the basic structure of a cell. Okay, so here's the basic structure. So notice how I put in two beakers, right? I had one of them that's clearly a metal, right? So here's my metal, the metal ion and its nitrate. Then um, this one is way more confusing, isn't it? So all I have is ions. So I put all of the ions on both sides in there, okay? Now, I don't have a metal that I can put in there. Like, oh, I'll use manganese. No. The reason why I don't use manganese is because manganese will react. We don't want manganese to react. So we want something that doesn't react. So I'll throw platinum in there. Okay. Now, if you notice, I put iron on the left-hand side. I had to decide which one of these two to flip. So what I, what I have to do is remember, I need to have a positive E cell. So if I flip this one, I'm a fool because I would get a negative value. A negative is not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a positive. That's a really, really, really difficult arrow to draw. So I'm gonna get rid of that. So I'm gonna flip this one. And the reason why is 1.51 minus 0.036 is going to be a positive number, okay? So I'm gonna flip this guy, all right? So, if I flip the bottom one, that means I'm going to have Fe yields Fe plus three, plus three electrons. So notice how this is oxidation because this guy is losing electrons, right? So if it's losing electrons, that means it's going to be the anox, oops, the anox part. So this is going to be my anode. And my electrons flow from anode to cathode. Electrons go this away. Okay, that weird line. So that means I need to complete the circuit by having my negative ions go this way and my positive ions go that way. Okay, I could have used the NaNO3, but KNO3 is, I don't know, my favorite for today. Okay, um, the other thing I have to point out is notice how my solid is turning into an aqueous. That means that iron is dissolving. No, but it's true. Iron is dissolving. All right. The other one, when we were up here and we were talking about it, the anode, I'll, I'll write that down. We'll just go ahead and write that down. The anode dissolves and the cathode plates. And what I mean by plating is if I have this, it will start to add more and get thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker. All right. That will finish part one for us. And to that, I say, toodles.